Maria Montessori said, the best way and the only way that children learn is first through their senses. Those learning connections don't happen if they haven't touched the work, smelt the work, seen the work, heard the work, and um, engaged with it in a very active way. So the sensorial equipment is one of the most important areas of a Montessori classroom. The equipment that you see in front of you and these um, exercises all the way through to these are very precisely made pieces of material. But it is possible to give the children sensory experiences, learning experiences that involve their senses without buying expensive Montessori equipment. And I'll show you some of the pieces of equipment that you can make. Each piece of equipment in a Montessori sensorial area usually only involves one sense at a time. And that's quite different to how children's toys are made. If you think of the toys that we buy for babies, they often have bright colors, lots of things going on, things that they need to touch and see and listen to, lots of noise. And for a young child who's trying to understand their world, that is sometimes overwhelming. So you will see this example. This is called the pink tower. And it's a very um, important part of Montessori equipment. Often the pink tower is seen as a symbol of Montessori education. What's important with this tower is that all of the cubes are the same color. So when the children build this piece of equipment, they have to use their visual sense. They have to look carefully when they put each cube on top of each other to make sure that it's accurately built. They can't build like they would with a, with a traditional toy where each block is a different color. In those instances, often the children just memorize the order instead of using their visual sense. So you would be able to even take an existing tower that you have and just change it to all one color. The other um, part that Maria Montessori built into all of the sensorial equipment is something called a control of error. And that means that the child has the control to fix any mistakes they might have if they use the sense that they should be using. So in this case, when the children build this pink tower and it's accurately constructed, all of the pieces carefully on top of each other, this smallest cube fits into each part that goes up. And if it doesn't, it tells the child that they have built this incorrectly and they need to look for their mistake. They don't need an adult to tell them that. These are called the knobbed cylinders and they have different dimensions to them. So in this set, there's a difference in not the height of the cylinders, but the diameter of the cylinders. And when the child takes all of these out, there's only one place to put them back. So if, for example, the child puts this block in there, they can see that it's in the wrong place, but they're going to be left with this one too, that won't fit. So they're going to have to look very carefully and see, ah, oh, this one doesn't fit, put it in the correct place, and then that one will go in. So that's a self-correcting mechanism that Maria Montessori built into all of the equipment. In this set, they vary in their height. So these go, they get gradually higher. In this set, they are different in their height and their diameter. And in this set, they differ only in their height. So we're slowly introducing to the child the idea of differences in dimensions and, and having that in place. So in this, you would introduce the child to the two cylinder blocks where there's the greatest variation. So this set is the biggest difference because they differ in height and dimension. So you would introduce the child to that. That's 
much easier for the child to sort than this set, which only differs in their height. When all of these are out on the child's work mat in front of them, the child has to look much more carefully to know which one goes in to which place. So each time the child takes out a cylinder, they're using the same fingers and the same grip that we want them to use when they hold a pencil. So we're strengthening those fingertips. The other senses that are developed in the child, their auditory sense. In these, the child has to shake one red and one blue and listen carefully to see if they match. And in this activity, the control of error is underneath. If they match, the colors at the bottom will match. But if I listen carefully, I can hear that these don't match. Why is it important for us to develop that auditory sense, that hearing sense in the child? When they do reading and they have to learn their letters, they need to be able to hear carefully the difference between certain letters, even if those letters sound similar. So letters like B and P, they need to be able to hear the difference between those. And that's why developing their auditory sense is important. Another sense that we have, which is related to our visual sense, um, but is actually in a different part of your brain, is called the chromatic sense. And chromatic means color. So it's developing our sense and understanding of color. And in this set of materials, the child first starts learning to match the primary colors, red, blue, and yellow. And when they match them and they learn those names, then we have another set where more colors are added. So again, we use that principle of the known to the unknown. So within this set is red, blue, and yellow, but we add colors to that. And the last um, set in the color boxes is one where the children have to grade the colors from darkest to lightest. And they try to match um, these, these different tablets that we have. We call them tablets to different shades of blue in their environment, try and see where they are. Another important um, part of this exercise is if the child tries to draw and copy these colors on a piece of paper, they learn how to regulate their pencil pressure. So when they write, they don't press too hard and they don't press too lightly. So these tablets are made out of sandpaper. And what the child does with their eyes closed is feel these and develop a sensitivity on their fingertips to the sense of touch. And that is also an indirect preparation for when they need to write and they need to regulate the amount of pressure that they use. In the classroom, we have activities also for developing the child's sense of taste and smell. There is cotton wool with different um, smells on it. And the child needs to smell, learn to smell, and find the matching bottle to that smell. In your brain, developing all of your senses equally is an important part of being able to regulate your responses to things. So children need to be able to develop their sense of taste and smell so that it can be balanced in their brains. A child who hasn't integrated their sense of smell and taste will be distracted in the classroom by a strange smell and that will mean that they can't focus on their maths or their reading later on because that sense is not fully integrated. This piece of Montessori equipment is another extension activity where the child has to push down on these cylinders and they have a different degree of resistance and again that's for regulating how the child feels things in their fingertips which affects how they're going to write later on. Maria Montessori into the sensorial area incorporated a lot of work 
to introduce children to the ideas of geometry and algebra, where the children learn about three-dimensional shapes, they learn about two-dimensional shapes, learning different sizes, and again you'll see Maria Montessori used a lot of material to develop this pincer grip that is so important for writing. This piece of material is called the binomial cube. And the binomial cube is a concrete, hands-on representation of an algebraic formula that children will probably only learn in grades seven or eight. Maria Montessori said at the time when the child learns best through their senses, which is under six years old, introduce them to as many learning concepts as you can in a concrete form. We're not worried about whether children know the formula or remember the formula. What we want them to do is remember the experience of working with this piece of material. So in the beginning, all they're really doing is matching size, dimensions, and they're matching colors. Into their memory somewhere will go this idea that will serve them later on in their learning. But they'll match first the color. They match red to red. And they match the red to the red on this side. And now they're going to match a different rectangular prism where the square is smaller and the other sides are there. And what the children learn is that different dimensions and different shapes, as in rectangles and squares, are things that can combine into being a cube. For young children, this is a three-dimensional puzzle. It's fun, it's matching colors, it's matching dimensions. But in our school, we have children in grade four and five that can tell you the algebraic formula that goes with this piece of material because they experienced it when they were young. So there's a lot of material in this area that you will explore with at your workshop. Material that introduces the child to geometry, geometric concepts of using triangles to make up different shapes, using three-dimensional shapes to understand how things are made up in their world, and most importantly, in the sensorial area, we add language to the children's experiences. So the children don't only build the pink tower, they learn big and small. They learn big, bigger, biggest. They learn the language associated with concepts. Because all children, whether they're in a Montessori school or not, have experience on their environments and they absorb these concepts. But in order to grasp and understand a concept, you have to add the language that goes with it. And that's what we do systematically in the sensorial area. We give them the language to all of these impressions that they've absorbed from the world around them in their first three, four and five years. We give them the words and when we give them the words, we have real learning.